Oh my word, I have 44 missed text. I bet it's your cinema group. It is. <laughs> Anybody have a group chat that literally always you have over 100 notifications if you're away from your phone for like 30 minutes? Nope. Your family one. That, no, it has never been that many. I wish you weren't a liar. <laughs> Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's a Corbin. <laughs> and you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks on Patreon. Follow us through the account. Ring the bell as well. Uh, and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. Babe, what do you know about Hinduism? Um, very little. Same, same. Um, you probably know more than I do. Uh, outside of obviously what I've learned over the past three years. But do you know they, they're just like, they have a uh, either theory or belief of the multiverse. Like mm. they created it in Marvel. Uh, no, like it's actually part of the mythology. Um. Anyway, so this is going to kind of go over that a little bit. It's the the multiverse in Hindu cos cosmology. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh, so it's like the multiverse, but it's. Yeah. But I don't think Doctor Strange can just open it by going like this. Maybe. Maybe he can. I have no clue. We're uh, gonna this is find out. this is an educational video. Hopefully, if I... any once if any information is wrong, blame the video once again. I love informational videos. Information is good to have, as yeah. long as it's correct information. I just like to know things. I know stuff, the Lord. This is a vast and complex place that, in many ways, we still don't understand. We exist on this relatively tiny rock called Earth, floating around a relatively average star, the Sun. And with the help of modern technology, we've only just begun to explore even a tiny part of the space that surrounds us. Given our modest cosmic standing, then, it's incredible to think that even if we were to somehow explore the entirety of the universe, there might still be more out there. But this is well, unveiled, yeah. and today we're setting sail to travel the multiverse, and this time through the lens of Hindu cosmology. Do you need the big questions answered? Are you constantly curious? Then why not subscribe to Unveiled for more clips like this one, and ring the bell for more thought-provoking content. If you're a fan of science, science fiction, superhero movies, pretty much anything nowadays, then you're probably familiar with the multiverse. The theory that we're all living in only one of possibly infinite parallel universes. And while there's no confirmed scientific French, right, babe? whether or not the multiverse in any of its many guises is true, it is a concept that has crossovers into faith as well. So for today's video, we're assessing the multiverse as conceived in Hindu cosmology. To understand this multiverse, it's helpful to first consider other aspects of Hindu mythology. For example, there's an important distinction made here between matter and spirit. In Hinduism, the universe is composed of both of these things, with the main difference being that matter is physical and can therefore be destroyed, whereas spirit is non-physical and can so never be destroyed. For Hindus, the physical material part of existence is then an illusion. And so it follows that the ultimate goal of Hinduism is to reach enlightenment, mm -hmm. a level of existence at which one can see through the illusion and realize that all material things are temporary and that the spirit is always more important. The cyclical nature of existence is another major and well-known theme in Hinduism. And ultimately, it's another key aspect to the Hindu multiverse. The idea is that all material things go through three main phases of creation, preservation, and destruction. Therefore, again, the physical part of the universe, all things that we can see, feel, hear, and so on, must eventually be destroyed. These three phases are often represented by three of the most prominent Hindu gods. Okay. Brahma, the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. And it's believed that the interactions between these three are what fundamentally result in a many-layered reality of multiple universes, a multiverse. In Hindu tradition, the lifespan of the universe corresponds to the lifespan of Brahma, at the end of which Brahma dies and the universe is destroyed with him. Fortunately, though, even after the death of the universe, all is not lost, and a new universe is born out of the ashes of the old. 
In this way, it's sometimes argued that Hindu cosmology has some similarities with modern scientific theories regarding the universe. Hmm. Hinduism essentially holds that everything is born from a single point, much like it is in the Big Bang Theory. It then posits that everything eventually collapses into that same point, which comes close to another floated scientific prediction for our universe's fate known as the Big Crunch. What's <laughs> most important, though, is that because a new creation always follows from destruction in Hinduism, destruction isn't considered a bad thing. After all, the god Shiva, the destroyer, has a divine duty to end the universe in order to pave the way for a new one, and he's worshipped for doing so. Which brings us back to that distinction between matter and spirit. Matter, remember, can be destroyed, but that's fine because the spirit continues. The Hindu multiverse, in one sense, then, refers to the fact that the universe is not a single space, but rather infinite spaces occurring one after another. But perhaps even more significantly, across various Hindu texts, there is mention not just of one universe that goes through this cycle of birth, death, and rebirth, but rather many. In some cases, it's suggested that there's an endless number of universes that all coexist at the same time. It's variously said that these universes float around just like atoms do from our perspective, and that each one contains its own Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, its own story of birth, preservation, and destruction. It's said that each universe consists of many <coughs> layers too, including earth, water, fire, air, and sky, to add more detail. But despite these structural similarities, each universe has the potential to be unique. By hosting different creatures, for example, different environments, cultures, and perhaps different rules of nature. And some universes even come with other universes contained inside them. The possibilities are essentially endless then. As such, there are many myths and legends in the ancient texts that refer back to the multiverse, making use of the many, many variations that it offers. So now we have the idea that each individual universe is moving through a repeating cycle from birth to rebirth, and the idea that this is happening across countless multi-layered, multiple universes that exist on a higher level. You'd perhaps think that the structure of reality must end there, but there's one final concept to incorporate. In the ancient texts, the Puranas, the mythology goes into detail about 14 further worlds, or locus, that also contribute to the multiverse total. There is some debate as to whether locus are intended to be taken literally as physical realms or if they're meant as symbolic representations of different levels of consciousness, but in either case, they play a major role. The locus are located on different planes of existence, with seven forming the heavens, or upper worlds, and seven forming hell, or the underworlds. Those belonging to the upper worlds are known as the Viaritis, and the highest of all of them is the Satyaloka, which is held to be the home of truth and is also where Brahma is said to live. The upper lokas then descend through various levels, all containing various supreme and good deities, until we get back to Earth, which is the first and lowest of the it's upper like the worlds. seven layers of heaven. From here, though, we can descend Remember that? further into the lower seven lokas, which are called the Pataulas. At the lower stages, we encounter various demons and malevolent forces, until we finally arrived at the lowest and worst level, the Naga Loka. To move from top to bottom of the Lokas, then, is a journey from wisdom and enlightenment to immorality and sin. And with Earth situated close to the center, it's easy to see that the lesson contained here is that we, mere human beings, can wind up rising or falling depending on the actions we take during our lives. Hmm. So now we have a full and rich picture of the Hindu reality. Let's recap. First, there's the idea that the universe moves through a cycle of births and rebirths, producing new universes every time. This cycle is guided by the gods Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and carries on indefinitely. Second, we have the idea that this cycle is happening across endless universes, not just this one, that exist on a higher plane of reality. These multiple universes are many-layered and are self-contained. Third, and finally, inside each of these many cyclical universes, there's a fundamental structure of lokas, split across 14 levels in total. Earth itself is in the middle, but there are many other realms above and below Earth, too. The highest of which promises peace, the lowest of which promises torment. For the most part, the myths and legends suggest that traveling across the multiverse is difficult, if not impossible. And many of those who do achieve it only do so with the help of at least one divine being. But to finish, we'll again highlight the distinction made at the top of this video between physical matter and the non-physical spirit. 
When considered against the backdrop of the multiverse, we encounter the possibility that the spirit can go to places that are otherwise impossible for our physical bodies to reach. We're imbued with consciousness, imagination, and emotions like love, fear, and hope. It's these that color or cloud our experience of life. And it's perhaps through these that we can gain a greater understanding. The multiverse in Hindu cosmology is perhaps then as much a spiritual concept as it is a physical one. There are elements of it that share similarities with emerging theories in physical science, yes. But to truly explore this particular version of the multiverse, you must prepare... Looks like fun holy right there. ...into your soul. Navigate that journey well, and enlightenment can be yours. Dang. What do you think? Is there anything we... There's a lot of information. Yeah, I, I kind of had no clue that there was this whole multiverse... Uh, I knew that obviously there's certain aspects of like enlightenment and, and all this kind of right, stuff and obviously cool. different gods and, and deities and stuff like that. But it, and I, I think because the, the Destroyer, I believe Ren Beer is coming out with uh, – he has a new massive film coming out. Um, I think Br Brahmastra. What was the movie we watched which was – Basically about the three. Uh, the old one? Was it like oh, really old? We watched in Classic Month? No. No, not wasn't. that one. It was modern. It was more modern? Um, and in the end, he... Well, I don't want to spoil it. Which... Who was in it? I... That's... I don't know. But, um... Well, if it's a Hindu thing, I think they already all know it. So it was about, like, you watched these three grow up. Um, one was, like, really timid and shy, and then he defended his brother, and he, like, killed this guy. And then in the end, he pulled him out of the well, and they buried him. Remember? Mm -mm. But it was, like, about the three main gods mm. and how they function gotcha oh uh was it was it did we watch it just a few months ago it wasn't long ago like was it the one where he did the crazy tiger dance yes yeah ggvv uh it's kind of that film it was a fantastic film uh but yeah 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 so they i think i think that kind of had to do with the three i i, right. I think you're the correct three, the, like the three gods yeah and how they function this is the new Brahmastra. Mm. It's a massive film coming out. There's been it's an action adventure fantasy film. Part one. And um Ren Beer's in it, Ali is in it, Amitak Bakchan's in it. Um nice. but I think he's playing the destroyer. Oh, it says Shiva, so Shiva's the destroyer, right? Part one, Shiva. Yeah. Um so um uh, it's quite funny how, how much you actually learn just from watching films and and different yeah. kind of stuff like that and how much it teaches you about certain... Obviously, you can't learn but, everything from it, but... But that was, like, mind-blowing. That was, like, a lot of information to take in yeah. at one and point. And some aspects of it, because obviously we both grew up in very Christian homes, grew up in the church our entire life. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something in Christianity called the seven layers of heaven. You know about that one? Um. Yeah, there's, like... The concept. Yeah, there's like a concept yeah, 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 yeah. seven levels or something uh, like not as extensive as like multiverse no 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 nowhere near um but yeah that's super interesting um and it kind of does go with like what you kind of hear like neil degrasse tyson talk about in terms of like how many different universes there are and, and multiverses and and all that kind of stuff yeah um a lot of i've heard a lot of indians say like hindu uh, mythology kind of aligns a lot with certain scientific beliefs mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Um, so that was very interesting. Uh, really, once again, if any information is correct, don't blame us. Blame the video. Uh, <laughs> we are just watching it. <laughs> we don't know. We don't know anything. We were just watching this for educational purposes. But it's actually good to know because I think the more you know about Hinduism and Hindu mythology, the, probably the better you'll be able to understand a lot of Indian films. Yeah. Because obviously that is a through line. Right. But I mean, like, yeah, oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, definitely didn't know anything about, like, a multiverse. Like like you were saying, like, heard 
you know, your goal is to achieve enlightenment and like, so your spirit kind of mm-hmm. lives on or whatever. But I had never heard anything about a multiverse yeah. within Hinduism. Yeah, me either. Anyways, if there's other informational videos that we can react to, please let us know what they are down below. Just-